All right, today uh, we're starting in the new section. Um, this section deals with uh, what is called radians. Um, up till now, up through all your mathematical career, you have dealt with measures of angles to be in degrees. Everything you've done uh, with rectangles, triangles, all, 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 any time you dealt, any time you dealt with an angle, you dealt with it in the manner of a degree. When you get to higher level mathematics, in higher level mathematics, degrees start to fall apart. And calculations with degrees um, is not, you, you can't do it. You can't do the calculations in degrees. So what we have to do is we have to take a look at a different way of an angle and an angle measure. And that's going to be the idea of radians. When we're dealing with radians, Radians will allow us to deal with angles and upper-level mathematics and being able to do calculations at the upper-level mathematics. So when dealing with radians, we have to first discuss the idea of a unit circle. When we have a unit circle, a unit circle is a circle with one unit. Now, it could be one inch, one hash, one foot, one mile, one yard, one centimeter, one meter, does not matter. It's going to be one unit the radius is going to equal a value of one. And like I said, it could be one hash mark out on a, on a number line. But the radius is going to be one unit, whatever that unit is. When we talk about a circle, we have what is called the circumference. And when you're over there in Dr. Clark's class and you're in geometry, even last year with Ms. Fennell, you're in geometry, you learn the circumference of a circle. What's the distance around the circle? It's the perimeter of a circle. What is the distance around the circle? When we're dealing with a radian, when we're dealing with a radian, It is an arc length. A radian is an arc length. They are synonymous with each other. A radian is an arc length. That's for a specific central angle. It's the arc length on a unit circle for a specific central angle. It's the portion of the circle in the interior of the central angle. The radian is an arc length on a unit circle for a specific central angle. It's a portion of the circle in the interior of the central angle. The arc length on a unit circle for a specific central angle. It's a portion of a circle in the interior of the central angle. Now, there's some terms here that date us back into geometry. The first term is a central angle. What is a central angle defined to us as? Anybody remember what a central angle was? It is, a, it is a term that was used back in geometry. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So when you talk about a central angle, 
a central angle is an angle whose vertex point is at the center of the circle. And this is what was defined to you in geometry. So if we have a circle, we have a center point. When we talk about a central angle, this is our center point. This is a central angle. The vertex point is at the center. Now, when you talk about a circle, a circle, by definition, is a set of points that are equal distant from a given point. That's by definition. So your circle is just these points right here. It's the outer edge of the crust of the pizza. What you like about the pizza is in the interior of the circle. But the outer edge of the crust is the circle because all those points are equal distance from the given point, which is the center point. Well, when you're talking about a radian, it is an arc length on a unit circle that's in the interior, the interior of a central angle. So this here is the arc length, but it is also what we call radians. They are synonymous with each other. When you talk about an arc length, you can talk about radians. When you talk about radians, you can talk about the arc length. So when we're talking about the arc length, we're talking about measuring this distance right here. What is the measure of this distance? That's the number, uh, that's your arc length, but it's also the number of radians that you have. What is that distance? <clears throat> How do we calculate the circumference of a circle? How do we calculate the circumference of a circle? Pi r squared, oh, that's close, that's the area. That's everything in the inside. What's the circumference? What's the other one? Yeah, pi r squared, that's your area. That's everything in the inside. What's the distance around? What's the other formula that we had with circles? Oh my, how we forget. Two pi r, two times pi times the radius, or pi times the diameter. Two times pi times the radius. Well, if I take a look at a unit circle, what's the circumference? If I say this is a unit circle, what's the circumference? Well, if I have a unit circle, Braylon, what's the radius? One. So what's the circumference? How would I do it? Two times pi. And we can leave it like that. We don't have to multiply two times 3.1, approximately 3.14157182818. We don't have to multiply that out. We can just say this is 2 pi because I think when we say pi, we're not talking about apple or cherry pie. In mathematics, when we say pi, I think we all understand that to be 3.14. So we don't have to sit there and worry about decimals. We can just say the circumference is 2 pi. Because on our calculator, we can find our pi button on there if I needed to. So I don't have to really write that out. I'm okay with 2 pi. So if I say this is a unit circle, okay, I have one here, I have a radius of one unit here. 
This here is a unit circle. The radius is one unit. The distance around the circle, the distance around the circle is two pi. That is the circumference. Well, when we talk about radians, we're talking about the arc length. And what we've dealt with so far is we've dealt with central angles when we talked about angles of rotation. The vertex point was at the origin. The origin is also our center point here. And what we did is we rotated, remember our definition of an angle was the rotation of a ray, about a center point. So if we rotate this angle, or this ray, entirely around the circle. Brandon, how many degrees did we rotate it? 360 degrees. That's what we're used to. We rotate it entire, entirely around the circle, 360 degrees. Now, what we want to talk about this talk about is the number of radians or the arc length in the interior of the circle or of the angle. Well, you sit there and go, well, I started here and I ended here. There's nothing in the interior of that angle. But yes, there is. If I would take a look as I rotate this around, Right now, this is the interior of the angle. And I keep on rotating it around. This is now the interior of the angle. And I keep rotating this around. This is now the interior of the angle. And if I keep rotating this around, this is now the interior of this angle. And if I keep rotating it around, I'm going to rotate all the way back to here. The amount of things in the interior of the angle is this entire circle. So what's in the interior of this angle is whatever I rotated my ray through, that's in the interior of the angle. Well, that angle degree I rotated was 360 degrees. If I take a look at the distance of this entire circle, the distance of the entire circle is the circumference. So if I take a look at this, it's 360 degrees. This is also 2 pi radians. Because the entire circle is in the interior of that central angle. It's a little bit easier when we start going off that a little bit now. It's a little bit easier to visualize. Because if I started here and I rotated all the way to here. So my amount of rotation was here and I stopped to there. Joey, how many degrees did we rotate? 180 degrees. So we rotated 180 degrees. The question is now, what is the arc length that I rotated? What's the arc length that's in the interior? Well, if I go all the way around, that is 2 pi radians. If I go just 180 degrees, Kyrie, what part of the circle did we rotate there? What part of the circle did we rotate? If I rotated 360 degrees, I rotated the entire circle. If I rotate 180 degrees, I rotated, rotated what part of the circle? Half the circle. So if I have two pi radians, which is the whole circle, what would be half of that? What's half of two pi? If I have two pies over here, and then I only have half of the two pies over here, how many pies do I have left? One pie. 
So this is one pi radian. Can always go back to food. So if I have 180 degrees, that is pi radians because that is my distance. That is my arc length of this right here, pi radians. Well, let's rotate just 90 degrees. Let's rotate 90 degrees. How many radians would be 90 degrees now? Well, if the entire circle was two pi radians, 360 degrees was two pi radians. Then if I only go 180 degrees, that's half of the circle. So I have half of two pi, which was one pi. Rachel, what would be 90 degrees? What do you think? 0.5, okay, which is half pi, which how we write that is we write that as pi over two radians. Pi over two, half a pi, which is 90 degrees. What if we rotated only, whoopsie. If we rotated 60 degrees. How many radians would be 60 degrees? Well, if I go the entire circle, that's two pi, 360 degrees, that's two pi radians. I would go half of that, 180 degrees, that was pi radians. If I go 90 degrees, that was half pi radians or pi over two radians. What would be 60 degrees? Owen? A, a third. How, what, what'd you do basically? How, how'd, you, how'd you think that? You're exactly correct. How'd you, how'd you think the process? Okay, divided 180 by 60 and you got three. Or what would you have to do to 180 degrees to get to 60 degrees? What would you have to divide by? Three. So this would be pi over three radians. The key idea is knowing that if I had 180 degrees, that's pi radians. What do I have to do to 180 degrees to get to 60? I can divide by three. What can I do to 180 to get to 90? I could divide by 2. Thirty degrees. Thirty degrees would be how many radians? Well, what do I have to do to 180 to get to 30 degrees, right? Divide by 6. So this would be pi over 6 radians. Do one last one, 45 degrees. 45 degrees would be what number of radians? <laughs> Not four, pi over four. Would be pi over four radians. The key idea is this 180 degrees is pi radians, remembering that. Now we have a ratio or a proportion that we can utilize to be able to solve to convert any degree to radians or radians to degrees. Pi radians over 180 degrees will equal X number of radians over theta degrees. Putting values into this proportion will allow you to adjust or convert any radians to degrees or degrees back to radians. And once again, remembering Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees is very, very important here. Because when I have things in terms of pi, 
we have pi over 3. I could take the 180 degrees and put it in for the pi. 180 divided by 3? 60 degrees. 180 divided by 6? 30 degrees. 180 divided by 4? 45 degrees. So when you have pi in there and you're trying to convert it into degrees, just put 180 in for pi and click the clack through the calculator. But just take a look. What if I had 150 degrees? 150 degrees. I want to convert this into radians. 150 degrees in terms of radians. Well, if I take a look up top, I have pi radians over 180 degrees. This will equal x radians over 150 degrees. Pi over 180, x over theta. Now, to solve a proportion, hopefully remember how to solve proportions. Cross, multiply, and divide by the third value. Now, you want to leave things in terms of pi. Okay, Your solutions are going to be left in terms of pi here, unless instructed otherwise. So we have a diagonal multiplication, 150 times pi, and then you divide by the third one. Now this gives us a fraction to reduce down. The zeros go bye-bye. So we have 15 over 18. What can we take out of 15 and 18? Reduce our fraction down. We can take 3. So we take 3 out of 15. 3 out of 18. So we have 5 pi divided by 6. Once again, leave things in terms of pi. I want you to do the next three. Check your answers with somebody around you. 200 degrees in terms of radians. 300 degrees in terms of radians. 50 degrees in terms of radians. Leave things in terms of pi. Leave things in terms of pi. Check your answers with somebody around you.
Okay, let's go through these 200 degrees. What, Marley? 10 pi over 9. Okay, we have 200 pi over 180. The zeros go bye-bye, and we can take two out of top and bottom, 10 pi over 9. 300 degrees. What do we have, Sophia? 5 pi over 3. That is correct. 50 degrees. Talk about 50 degrees. Janae, what do you have? 5 pi over 18. And once again, leave it in terms of pi. Leave your solutions in terms of pi. As we talked about, when we have radians and we're trying to go back to degrees, the nice thing about when you have pi in there, you can just substitute in 180 degrees in for that pi. And you can take 180 divided by 12, and that's your degree measure. You can take your 2 times 180 divided by 3. Now, if you want to look at mental math here, you have 2 times 180 divided by 3. If you want to try to quicken your brain, um, you can, yes, there's no, there's, you can multiply 2 times 180 divided by 3 and get a solution. Or you can take 180 divided by 3 and say that's 60 and multiply by 2. And you come up with the 120. Okay, that's your mental math if you want to. But if you multiply 2 times 180 divided by 3, that is fine. There's no, there's no problems with doing that. Pi over 12, Toronto, what do you have? I'm sorry, what? 15, okay, I, I didn't hear you. 15 degrees. 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, what do we come up with, Chloe? 300 degrees. And once again, you can take pi divided by 3, that gives me 60. Multiply by 5, I can get to 300 degrees that way also. Or you can multiply 5 times 20 divided by 3, does not matter. Oh, there you go. That better. Okay, last one. Nine pi over four. Allie, what do you have? Four hundred and five degrees. Okay, so it's it's another way of dealing with measures, but it's nothing that's something that's going to be very very difficult. You just have to sort of change your mindset in regards to radians and degrees. Now, what you're going to be asked to do, you're going to be asked to do in your homework, and I'm going to ask you also. Um, I'm going to ask you to find sine of 2 pi over 3. And I want exact values. Now, it's still a little bit in a shady area in regards to my thinking. We've dealt with these problems already but we dealt with them in degrees. So there's no harm to sit there and say, this first change two pi over three to degrees. If we had two pi over three, what is that in a degree mode? Well, 
It's yeah, 2 times 180 divided by 3. What do we get? We multiply 2 times 180 divided by 3. What do we get? 120 degrees. So this is the sine of 120 degrees. This we've seen already. So I'm going to get out my axes. 120 degrees takes us into which quadrant? 120 degrees goes into which quadrant, Sydney? 120 degrees. Quadrant number two. Okay? So we make our triangle in quadrant number two. 120 degrees. What is our reference angle going to be? Okay? These should be things all are starting to kick back into our brain again. Reference angle. Mass and what's our reference angle? This is 120 degrees. What's our reference angle? 60 degrees. So now we have a 30, 60 right triangle. If we have a 30, 60 right triangle, we have a 1, we have a 2, we have a square root of 3. 1 across from the 30, 2 across from the high, on the hypotenuse, square root of 3 across from the 60. We check for any negative signs. And then we look at our sign. What's the sign defined to us as? Opposite of our hypotenuse. So we have square root of 3 over 2. So when you're asked to find the trig functions and you're given it and you're given radians here, just change it into degrees. Just change it into degrees and then go back to what we've done already. This is what we've done right here. Convert it into degree mode and then put it into things that you're comfortable and familiar with. Your homework for tonight is Wednesday's assignment, page 58 and 59. Page 58 and 59. 3 to 42, the multiples of 3. Okay, This will be our working notes for tomorrow. Okay, So it's important that you get this accomplished. Try to get as much of this accomplished tonight. It's Wednesday's assignment because we didn't have school class yesterday. Page 58 and 59, 3 to 42 multiples of 3. It's on classroom that way too. Okay, This will be our working notes for tonight. This will make life a lot easier for tomorrow. Okay, So accomplishing what you need to accomplish on this homework tonight is going to make it much easier for tomorrow. Questions you have? I is done. You have about seven, eight minutes here. <laughs>